Okay, today is January 1st, 2024, and this is the first part of a multi-part little uh, documentary series of me building my super strat. The reason it, I'm calling it a documentary series is because I'm doing this to document the process, so I'll be able to watch it back when I'm older, or if, um, if my family wants to watch it, or just like if people are interested. It's just a little documentation. I don't know how many videos there are going to be in this series because I've never done this and I'm still figuring this out in this guitar building thing and um, video making thing, but it should be fun and I'll try to make it not boring, but I'll warn you this first video is going to have a lot of talking. It's going to be uh, concept, um, design, like why I'm doing this, and also it'll have a parts overview and You'll see all of the components and, um, and yeah. So let's just start with why am I doing this? So I have two guitar, well, I have more guitars than just, but I have two main, my two main guitars are a Fender made in Mexico Stratocaster and an EVH Wolfgang. I have a Tele 2, which I really like, but those other two are my main guitars. I really like a lot about both of them but there are some things that I just that I don't like about e both of them so my goal is to mix these two guitars together and have one that can do not everything obviously because that's not really possible but can do a lot for what I'm needing to do right now at my gigs and stuff I'm going for an emphasis on comfort and playability and something that um, a guitar player like myself would really be wanting. Um, obviously I'm just building this for myself so I don't really have to worry about anybody else but I'm just thinking of it from a player's perspective. The sound ironically I didn't realize till the end of buying all the parts and thinking about the design, the sound is actually, it actually took the least consideration, like what pickups I'm gonna get and and more about what neck profile do I want, what, what body shape, like that sort of thing. This has been an idea of mine to build a fully custom guitar for about the last four or five years. Um, my favorite guitar player is Eddie Van Halen and he really inspired me to, you know, not be happy with what you can get on the shelf and look for something that really is best for you. And um, obviously he made his own and I just thought that was really cool. I'm glad I waited the last few years to do this because if I would have done it three or four years ago, what I would be doing today is completely, completely different. And, um, and also think in four or five years from today, I may have built a completely different guitar than what I'm building now. And that's cool, but I want a guitar that I don't have to feel bad about modifying, if that makes sense. So I have my Strat and the Wolfgang, and I made like subtle modifications. Like I changed the the bolts to stainless steel or I replaced the saddles like super subtle but I didn't change the overall character of it I didn't switch out the pickups like I, f I would feel bad about switching out the pickups on a Wolfgang or a Strat because I just feel like that would be changing the vibe of what a Strat is supposed to be if that makes sense the probably the final reason is because the gigs I've been doing recently require more heavy-duty instrument. I'm doing a lot of weddings. I play in a jazz fusion band. I play a lot of 80s music. Tuning stability, We there's, not, there's no time to tune. Um, we just go right into the next song. I'm, I'm hard on the instrument. I like to be able to do whatever I want. So that's why I'm building this guitar. So let's get into the parts before I just keep talking and talking and boring anybody else. 
Okay, so let's start with the body. It is based off of an early 80s Kramer Pacer. I ordered it from a company called Butala Guitars and it's extremely similar to a Strat, but it's a little bit sportier. It's a basswood three-piece. It's kind of like a two-piece, but it's really a three-piece because it has this interesting stripe down the middle. I don't really know what it's for. I'm pretty sure the stripe's basswood also, but it just looks like a little darker. I didn't really have an option whenever I ordered it, so, so yeah, I'm not sure what that's for. It's HSH, but the build I'm doing is HSS. I had the humbucker put in the neck position because if later on down the line, whenever I want, if I ever want to do a humbucker in the neck, I can, but for now, I'm interested in a strat HSS. Everything is great about this body, except the only two problems I've found is the neck mounting holes don't seem to be exactly centered. Like one looks a little bit higher than the other and it's kind of offset. But I tested it by putting the neck in the neck joint and put a flashlight to it and the holes seem to line up pretty good so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And the other problem with this body is, and this isn't really at any fault to Randy who built it, but the pickups I'm going with are noiseless stacked humbuckers and they are much taller and require a deeper cavity than regular single coil pickups. The other night I fitted one of the noiseless pickups inside the cavity and even without the pick guard, like if I drilled it directly into the wood, it would be touching the strings. Like it's just not deep enough. So later tonight, I'm gonna go to my friend's house and he's gonna help me route out the holes to be a little bit deeper. So I hope that goes smoothly. Okay, for the neck, the neck I'm doing is actually the exact same neck profile and fret material of my Wolfgang and also the same radius. It's made by Musicraft. It's a EVH asymmetrical 8191 neck profile. It's really smooth and quick. I'm doing medium frets. The Strat, I think they're jumbo and the Wolfgang is vintage size. So that, that'll be like a nice middle ground between the two of them. The fret material is stainless steel. I need the stainless steel frets because I just burned through frets, as you can see right here on my Strat. They're just so flat. I've, I've been playing it for like two years and I hate playing on flat frets. And like I said, I could have gotten a fret dressing, but that's not really gonna solve my problem. The Strat neck profile is, is it's cool, but I like the Wolfgang's way better. The wood is a rock maple neck and the fretboard is a 5A bird's eye maple from Musicraft, which just looks really nice. I would have just got a regular maple, but I thought if I'm gonna build this thing, I would go in fully, and I think that was the right move. So yeah, the bird's eye looks really nice. The headstock design is based off of the 1983 Kramers after they got sued by Fender for using Fender headstocks. They just cut the top off and made it like a beak, so it would have been like an 83, I think in 84 they switched to a banana style, but in 83 they have this beak, which is cool. A lot of other companies did the beak too, like Sir and um, Anderson. Yeah, it's kind of like a fusion-y look. I forgot to mention this, the fretboard radius is also the same as the Wolfgang. It's a 12 inch at the bottom and a 16 inch at the top, so it's compound which is nice because on the Strat, it's a nine and a half inch radius and I keep fretting out like whenever I do big bends. So I didn't really like that at all. It felt good for chords, but I mean, a 12 inch is gonna feel fine for chords too. It's not really that big of a difference. It's just more important to be able to bend and not fret out because I like to use low action. And the last thing for this neck is the truss rod adjuster. I selected a wheel adjust at the heel so I don't have to have a truss rod cover at the headstock or I don't have to take the neck off when I want to adjust it. I can just stick a tiny little Allen key in there and turn it left or right to adjust the truss rod and it'll be very easy. Okay, so let's talk about pickups and electronics. So very little time was actually spent on pickups and you know the sound of the instrument, ironically, which is funny because everyone thinks the sound is the most important thing, which it is, but I actually spent the least amount of time thinking about the sound. Initially, I got a Kramer Eruption humbucker in an Eric Johnson single coil set, 
but I was just nervous that it was not going to match and they weren't going to be balanced. And I had all this trouble trying to figure out what resistance um, pot to use. And I ended up returning all of that stuff and I went with a loaded pick guard with noiseless single coils and a Tim Shaw humbucker which I felt fit the vibe of this build way more than the others because the noiseless would save me a headache at a gig because I wouldn't be buzzing when I try to use a single coil pickup, which is nice. And the Tim Shaw humbucker is good because it was designed to just be like a nice humbucker sound, not too crazy or anything. And also it would fit well with single coils. So that seemed to work out very well. And also I found this loaded pickguard pre-wired and it's got a ton of other stuff it's got a dual shaft pot so it's 250k and 500k for the different pickups it's got the black pickup covers which i had to order for the other set which i ended up returning it's got the pots already it's got treble bleed i wasn't expecting it to have a treble bleed circuit on there when i bought it it didn't really give me any information it just told me what pickups were on it yeah it, it surprised me with the dual the dual shaft pot the treble bleed um the only thing is i'm probably going to disconnect the other tone knob i'm just going to do one volume in one tone the other problem I found with this loaded pickguard is, although it's really cool to have a dual shaft pot to do 250k and 500k for the pickups, it's very high friction. So I'm not sure if I'm even going to keep it. Like I'm going to try it, but I did find diagrams online and schematics on how to use 500k pots and then incorporate resistors into the schematic so that it brings it down to 250k for the single coils so we'll try it out but i'm not sure if i'm going to be set on it i'm not going to keep the red celluloid pick guard from fender because i think it's ugly and it would not fit this design it also doesn't fit the body i had to get a replica pick guard from the small company called pick guard planet which just makes aftermarket pick guards for pretty much every guitar you can imagine and they make back plates and all sorts of stuff this is a black acrylic pick guard they make based off the Kramer Pacer I told them not to drill knob holes because the original Pacer Deluxe has three knobs and I'm only doing two volume and tone and I'll put the knobs where I want to the guy was actually real nice he sent me a drill bit to use so it will be the correct size as we start to talk about hardware this is the last electronic component that is kind of like hardware because it goes onto the plate mount. This is the pure tone output jack. It's better quality overall than the Switchcraft and it would be more reliable. Even though I don't think I've had any problems with the Switchcraft jack, it's just that this is better quality and it was only like one more dollar so it was a no-brainer to get it. For hardware, and the bridge, I'm going to be going with a Floyd Rose original. This is the thing I miss most about the Wolfgang, is how I can do pretty much whatever I want and it stays in tune just perfectly. I love the whammy bar and anytime I touch it on the Strat, it's just terrible. A huge pet peeve of mine is to watch guitarists tune on stage, to watch them lift their arm up and even myself like in between songs to stare down at their shoes, look at the tuner pedal and the left arm's tuning the peg. For some reason that just really bothers me. Like I, I just think your sh guitar should be able to stay in tune. I'm going with Graph Tech saddles because I tried them on the Strat because I used to break a lot of strings from the regular saddles. The Graph Tech saddles are amazing. I've never broken a string with them. It might be unnecessary because it's a Floyd Rose original with German steel, but again, I'm going for reliability with this thing, so I thought it would fit. And also, it's a drop D tuna, so I can do drop D whenever I want. I installed a big fat brass block. They say it's supposed to improve sustain and tone, and I don't know if that's true because I haven't AB'd the regular steel one and the brass one, but I thought I'd put it on because I thought it's cool anyways. I also have the brass fine tuners, which literally does not make any difference. I just like the way they look. And once it's all put together, the black ones might actually look better, but for now, I like the brass ones. For tuners, I'm going with the Schaller locking tuners, uh, six in line. 
I have locking tuners on my telly and I think they're very cool, so I thought it'd be funny to have a triple locking guitar so it locks at the tuners, the nut, and the bridge. I also am going with Schaller strap locks with a Dunlop seatbelt strap. That strap came with the Dunlop strap locks, but I prefer to use the Schaller ones. I think they're a better design, better quality, and the Dunlop ones rattle around a little bit. Probably the most boring part of this whole design is just regular fender neck plate and screws. I was thinking about getting a customized neck plate with like an engravement on it, but I decided not to. Like obviously I can maybe, I can do that in the future, but for now this is just good enough. This isn't really a part of the guitar itself, but it is related. This case I bought is made by ESP for Kramer. It's a Kramer Pacer case designed to fit all Kramer Pacers and of course it doesn't fit the body, so I'm gonna have to switch some cases around in my guitars. I know for a fact that the case does fit my 5150 replica, so I'm probably gonna be switching those cases around like, and just see what works, but it's kind of annoying. What I think happened is Kramer changed the design of their Pacer a few times since the 80s, and this case is to fit the modern Pacer that is made by Gibson these days. Okay, if you've made it this far into the video, congratulations, because I have no idea how long it is. By now, I'm just kind of doing this as I go. But I understand you watch this and you're thinking, Jake, this is just a super strat. There's nothing unique about it. And yeah, at a, a, a when you look back at it, it's like, yeah, it's just a super strat. But if you look deeper into the microscopic level of it, you'll see that it's unique to me. This isn't something I would have been able to buy. Um, also, it was a fun project, and it would be cool to have a main guitar of mine for my career that I can say I built myself. I didn't buy it. I just I did all of it myself, which I think is going to be very cool. Okay, so that should be it for this long talking video. Um, the next part, uh, part two or episode two, or whatever I decide to call it, is going to be at my friend Anthony's house. We're going to go route the pickup cavity to be a little deeper. And that should be interesting because I definitely don't know how to use a router, but he just said he bought a new one. So I don't even know if he knows how to use it, but he probably does. So we'll see how that goes. So <laughs> we'll see you in the next video.